Hi everyone, this is Maverick Park, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this week's video, we want to discuss a question involving deducing an alkaline buffer on mixing two solutions. So let's take a look at this question. Which of the following pair of solutions will form an alkaline buffer that best resists pH changes when a small amount of acid or base is added? We have four permutations. Later, we will need to discuss what the resultant solution is. Now, the topic tested in this question is under ionic equilibria, under buffer solution specifically, and we are interested in determining an alkaline buffer. So first thing first is what is a buffer solution? A buffer solution is a solution that can maintain pH when small amounts of H plus or OH minus is added to it. The reason why a buffer can maintain pH is because inside this buffer there is an acid and base. Usually, I prefer to represent a buffer solution in this way. Inside this buffer solution, I will have an acid, and the job of the acid is to remove OH minus. I also have a base. The job of the base is to remove H plus. So essentially, a buffer is a mixture of acid and base. Acid will remove OH minus, the base will remove H plus, and thereby it maintains pH when we're adding H plus and OH minus. The reason why this acid and base can coexist with each other is because they are a conjugate acid base pair. It's either a weak acid conjugate base or weak base conjugate acid. For this question, since I'm determining alkaline buffer, I will be looking out for a mixture of weak base plus its conjugate acid. Next thing we have to do is I have to determine for each of these solutions when I mix them together, am I getting an alkaline buffer or not? And if I have more than one alkaline buffers, I want to determine which one of them will resist pH changes to a better extent because the question is asking us to determine an alkaline buffer solution that best resists pH changes. Let's take a look at solution A. Now solution A, 10 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide mixed with 20 cm cube of 0.2 mole per dm cube ammonium chloride. We need to identify each of these solutions. Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. Ammonium chloride NH4 plus is actually the conjugate acid of a weak base ammonia. And now I have a mixture of strong base plus conjugate acid. Now when you add the strong base and conjugate acid together, there will be a reaction between them. We can use the ice table to very quickly determine the resultant solution. And based on the resultant solution, then we can decide whether I have an alkaline buffer or not. So the ice table is here. Reaction is between ammonium and OH- from sodium hydroxide to give me ammonia and water. Initial number of mole of each of the solution we can actually calculate because the concentrations and volume are given. So number of mole of NH4 plus is 0.004, OH- is 0.001, and OH- is limiting, 100% of it will be used up. So the change will be minus 0.001 for NH4 plus, minus 0.001 for OH- minus, plus 0.001 for NH3. Resultant solution, I'll end up with 0.003 mole of NH4 plus, no more OH- minus because it is limiting, 0.001 mole of ammonia. And you notice I have a mixture of weak base and conjugate acid, and this will give me an alkaline buffer. So therefore, option A we will keep in mind. Later, we will run through the options and we see whether do we have another alkaline buffer, and we will compare which one of them will maintain pH to a better extent. Now, next, how about solution B? Now, solution B, I have 25 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube sodium hydroxide added to 50 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube. This is sodium ethanoate, and your ethanoate, it is the conjugate base of ethanoic acid. Now, I have a mixture of strong base and conjugate base of a weak acid. Now, when you have strong base plus conjugate base, then it cannot function as a buffer because as mentioned previously, a buffer need to be acid plus base. I need to have an acid to remove OH minus. I need to have a base to remove H plus. And it must be a conjugate acid base pair. So a mixture of base plus base, it is not able to maintain pH. So B, we can ignore. Next, how about C? C, I have 10 cm cube of one mole per dm cube H2SO4, sulfuric acid. 20 cm cube of one mole per dm cube. This is CH3, CH2, NH2. This is our ethyl amine, a weak base. So I have a mixture of strong acid and weak base. When I put these two solutions together, again, there's an acid-base reaction. What we will do is we will again use the ice table to determine the resultant solution. So one mole of H2SO4 will react with two moles of ethyl amine to give me two moles of ethyl ammonium. So this is the conjugate acid of the weak base and sulfate 
anion. I have 0.01 mole of H2SO4, 0.02 moles of weak base, and you notice in this case, since the mole ratio involving H2SO4 and the weak base is 1 is to 2, and the amount of your H2SO4 and the weak base that we have is also 1 is to 2, then they will exactly react with each other. So both of them will be completely used up. I'll be using up 0.01 mole of H2SO4, 0.02 mole of ethyl amine to give me 0.02 mole of your product, which is a conjugate acid. And since I'm only left with a conjugate acid, a conjugate acid by itself is not capable of maintaining pH because a buffer needs to be a mixture of a conjugate acid-base pair. So therefore, C is also not the answer. Finally, let's look at D. 50 cm cube of 0.05 mole per dm cube NaOH added to 50 cm cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube CH3 NH3 plus Cl minus. This is methyl ammonium chloride. And your methyl ammonium is the conjugate acid of your weak base, methyl amine. Now I have a strong base added to your conjugate acid. There will be an acid-base reaction. Same thing, we can use the ice table to determine the resultant solution. I have 0.005 mole of your conjugate acid, 0.0025 mole of OH minus, and your OH minus is limiting, 100% of it will be used up. So the change involving the conjugate acid will be minus 0.0025, OH minus, minus 0.0025. The weak base that is being formed, plus 0.0025. You notice we will end up with 0.0025 mole of methyl ammonium and 0.0025 mole of methyl amine. So I have the same number of mole of conjugate acid and weak base. So since this is a mixture of weak base plus conjugate acid, we know that this is an alkaline buffer. So it is part of the consideration and the number of mole of your weak base and conjugate acid is exactly the same. We should recognize that this buffer is at its maximum buffering capacity where pOH equals to pKb. So therefore, pH will be a constant term. So since pH is a constant, then a buffer at its maximum buffering capacity will function at its best. It can best resist changes to pH. So in this case, we have already determined that my answer to this question, my alkaline buffer solution that can best resist pH changes will be solution D. Alright, so that was the discussion involving determining an alkaline buffer when mixing two solutions together. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.